Well, I'm Mimi Kennedy, Mimi Kennedy, and I play <laughs> Karen Clark, the Assistant Secretary of State, one of the many in the U.S. Uh, at some fictional administration hmm, that wants to rush to war in the Middle East, uh, based on um, hmm, fiction. Wow, <laughs> when could that be? So uh, that's that's what I play, who I am, and what I play in real life. I'm well, never mind, an actress. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> and I'm Charles Manson. <laughs> no, I'm David Rashi, and I play kind of a combination of uh, Donald Rumsfeld, David Addington, uh, Andrew Carr, John Bolton, Carl Rove. You know, all those supercilious, uh, egotistical, arrogant um, men who did our country such a disservice. Is your politics showing? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and Zach. Uh, I'm Zach Woods. I play uh, Chad, who is a State Department aide, who's sort of a sniveling, ambitious, and uh, uh, upwardly mobile young man. So. <laughs> Just like yourself. Yeah, this is not a stretch. It's not a stretch at all. He had to dig deep for this character. Well, one of the things that I loved about it is this This just seems like a masterpiece of invective. I mean, people are just ripping people like nobody's business. And I think the Brits are especially good at it. I think of Black Adder taking on Baldrick. It's that same kind of, good. where do they come up with this stuff? It's well, incredibly you know, nasty. At, at the, last, the name of the last writer is named Tony Roach, or what's his last name? R-O-C-H-E, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, one of the writers was a specialist in swearing. <laughs> Seriously, that right? that's absolutely true. And they would send him uh, like for a pass on the script, and he would send back all this stuff. Or they would call him and say, "Listen, we need," and he would say, "Okay." You big fat, and then he would one of, one of the, all those strings. Those are him. Is that well, right? not all of them? Yeah, but yeah that, that's, that, that's his. That's life. a heck of a special <laughs> to yeah. have. Well, what I was wondering is that this is an interesting mix between British and American actors. If there was any kind of, do, you, do the Brits have a different kind of sense of humor than the Americans? Did that come come to play, or did, were you guys all sort of on the same wavelength? Well, I'll tell you what happened is is we got there, all the Americans got there. We had a rehearsal in New York. And the Americans got there, and we heard these Brits, uh, you know, like improvising. Yeah. And every single, I don't know about you, but I think every actor went home and called their agent and said, I'm getting fired. I'm getting fired. <laughs> these guys I'm are so good. Fired. And the Brits, to themselves, were saying, these Americans are unbelievable. Oh, my God. How do we get up? I know they say, you Americans, you made us up our game. You were so good. You asked questions. So everybody was wow. scared. Yeah. Everybody was scared. That's yeah. good. And so by the end, did you guys feel like you were all on the on the same wavelength? Or did... Or did so what's nice about this is apparently it's based on a very popular uh, British sitcom. Yes, exactly. Sitcom, and this is kind of like that British sitcom, the thick of it comes to Washington, so you actually have the right. clash of two worlds at the same time. And they do the sitcom. They're the ones in the thick of it. They'd done six shows, so they all knew who they were. Yeah. And we had to plug in as the Americans, but I think that we somehow succeeded, and I would like to think that having lived through this as Americans, we were way ready to <laughs> depict our version of what Americans were doing in those positions at that time. That's very good. Uh, listen, uh, in terms of the politics, are you at all concerned? I mean, it's there's clearly Bush Blair, you know, parallels. I mean, it's uh, it's how Britain and the United States sort of trick themselves into going to war, or were you know the the. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, or got misled but, by the media. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We were all party to this. But here's my question: Do you feel like there's a danger that it may become dated? After all. We, we've elected a new president. You know, Hope reigns uh, they, supreme. They were, they were afraid. And it's just the contrary. Yeah. Because, you know, all this stuff is coming out. We're finding out more now. I mean, everything that we suffered under and everything we thought might be true, we're now finding out is true and in spades. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all this stuff is coming out about Donald Rumsfeld and his biblical exhortations at the top of his military of uh, uh, right? Just the, the other Greece. day. I mean, please. And, I mean, all the, all the, the emails are coming out and uh, the whole thing about torturing people, you know, 180 times so that they will say what we want to. And, I mean, what is this, Russia, China? I mean, that's what we were doing. It's, it's, you know, and so this is extremely apt. So for you, David, in particular, yes. I mean, you are playing the embodiment of people or someone who you yeah. don't exactly aspire to be. Was that more fun for you, trickier? Did you feel like you were, were you trying to, to ramp up the negativity or the positivity? No. How, how did you play your particular negative role in your mind? Well, let's just start with the fact that we had a script. 
Okay. Right. So there were a bunch of words that we had to say. So, so it's not like I, like I chose to say things that were, you know. I, mean, I heard, and we'll get to this, that yeah. uh, there's a lot of improvisational work, at yes. least behind the scenes. But anyway, continue. Well, and also, I've been studying uh, Donald Rumsfeld. I mean, you know, he is imperious, arrogant, uh, condescending, belittling. You're right. Any of these people, you see them in, in the uh, Senate hearings, Condi Rice, they talk over you, you know, they don't listen, they try to bully, they're bullies. And uh, my dad was kind of like that. No, <laughs> my dad, that's true. My, there's a little of my dad You're in there. a role model. He was oh, a little yeah. bit, he was tough. And also, you know, Rumsfeld is from Chicago. And the, and he's Rumsfeld, you know, so there's a German. And I have a German background. <laughs> no, and from where I come from, there's this, there's a kind of a stubborn German. Uh, nope. Well, don't you, nope, not going to. Nope. Well, don't you think, nope, nope, nope. You know, yeah. I'm familiar with Ooh, that. My husband's and that's, family. <laughs> everybody's family. Now, Mimi, I know you're very political, and you, you've sort of been active in liberal politics, and you got to play. Did you have a role model in mind for your character? Because you're sort of the, uh, the uh -huh. leading left figure, I would yeah. say, in the movie. Unfortunately, there really sort of wasn't one in the United yeah. States at the time, so I had to sort of pretend it was I yeah. who had been in that position. What would I have done? That's really the way that I had to look at it. So, so you had no uh, maybe Hillary Clinton or Nancy Pelosi kind of uh, you know floating around Not in your Nance. head. What Not can I tell you? <laughs> mm -mm. No, no, Nancy wouldn't have done it for me psychologically to get there. Okay. Uh, Hillary a little bit reminded of the health care wars and how she had to put a brave face on being absolutely slammed and, and you know, taken out of that debate. But really, honest to God, in my progressive friends whose voices were bravely uplifted throughout the nation in every church basement I have visited, and they acted with dignity and as if they had the power of a citizen to stop a war. And I was really thinking of them if they had ever uh, been ambitious enough to get into to the State Department or been of the right age. There's a woman that I know who did resign from the State Department, and I remember her telling us of the letter she had written. She wrote, resigned very early on, and she had been in the military. Quite a no-nonsense woman, and I was kind of thinking of her, too. <laughs> very good. And how about the sniveler? Uh, <laughs> the sniveler. For me, well, one thing uh, when we started uh, rehearsing, Armando, the, uh, Armando said to us, uh, was that... The writer-director. Uh, the writer-director, right? Uh, he had said that um, uh, uh, Washington is like Hollywood for ugly people. Um, and I thought that was helpful to me to think about it in terms of like all of the sort of nasty, insecure actors who I've ever met at any auditions, <laughs> people who, are, who, who talk to you purely to find out what you're working on and what's going on. You know, the sort of writhingly uncomfortable but also very aggressive <laughs> uh, auditioners who I've encountered. I sort of tried to draw on, on all those unpleasant experiences. So you brought personal insight from your world That's rather right. than the, the world of politics. Yeah. Very, very well, good. Let me just yeah, add, with regard to all this, uh, uh, the politics, and I mean, I would say that you wouldn't say that this movie is left-leaning. I know that doesn't sound like it, but there, the, a target was set up, and that is the Bush years and the run-up to the Iraq war, and they aimed for it and shot at it. <laughs> So it's not wasn't liberal or conservative really, even though we see, we seem to be that way. I mean, I think everybody, to a certain extent, or a great percentage of people, are pretty angry at what happened over the last eight years. There's no no question about that. Um, but the other half of it is that that in the process of it, that these guys like Armando Iannucci and the other writers are you know they have the DNA of the Goon Squad, you <laughs> yes. know of of Monty Python, D Peter Cook and Dudley Moore. That's I mean true. that that's the legacy yeah. that they yeah. you know the Spike Mulligan that they, yeah. they, and so over and above everything else, it's funny as hell. Yeah. It is yeah. just a hysterically it's funny movie. It's twitting got twitting the proud, really twitting yep. the proud. You know yeah. I wanted to add yeah. the thing about it not being partisan political. For instance, Iceman is in the fiction the person who gave the intelligence upon which all this uh, who you know great military adventure is based. I was thinking this morning. Remember, the real guy's name was Curveball. Now, yeah. is it, Curveball is a guy that was his name. is a pitch that pretends to be something it's not and makes you whiff. Yeah.